This conference will now be recorded. Oh, lovely, lovely it is, but 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 I think. Um, hello, the audio, the, the, the audio of so many so many participants. Hello. Uh, Nandesh, you can go on with day two. Welcome to you all. We have about 33 participants, 30 meaning thereby, roughly. So, a good number. Please go ahead. Good, good morning, everyone. Good morning, sir. I hope everybody is doing great. Okay, yeah, and have the session. Have they, yeah, have they received um, the presentation part, day one presentation? So I will, I, I will ask the team to send that to them. Okay, perfect. 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 I think they do. Okay. Okay. So today yeah, we will please, be, please, please go ahead. We will be discussing. Sure, sir, sure. So everybody, please mute yourself. Thank you so much. So today what we will be doing, we will be completing the uh, yesterday's part that was left off. We will try to cover that and also we will be doing the Anaconda installation. So while I'm covering these topics, I will recommend you or I'll advise you to install Anaconda on your systems. Does everybody have Anaconda installed on the system? Please type yes or no. OK, no problem. First of all, uh, yeah, I'm sharing the link for the Anaconda. So you need to make sure uh, you need to check, first of all, the configuration of your system that uh, is it 64 bit or is it 32 uh, bit? So what do you have to do for that? You have to go to the control panel. Please, everyone, go to your control panel. Once you go to the control panel, you have to go to system. System settings, there is an option as system. Please type yes or no if you are able to follow me. So when you will click on system, you will see the system configuration setting. So I have a 32 bit operating system. The PC that I have right now with me is 32 bit. So you can also check if you have a 32 bit operating system or if you have a 64 bit operating system. So according to that, you can download the Anaconda. Either 64 bit or either 32 bit. OK, let's move back to the because it's going to take a while. Then you have to just follow the standard instruction that we do while installing any software. And if anybody face any problem, do let me know. OK, so we yesterday we've understood the theory of linear regression. How does the linear regression model works? So today we will do the practical implementation. On the Jupiter. So uh, if you have yesterday's notebook, what you can do, you can go to try Jupiter. Dot org. And then you can click on classic Jupiter, try classic notebook. And it will take some time. 
to open and then you can follow the same step you can upload the file the clean csv file up here and also uh, you can upload the yesterday notebook that we left off you can create you can go up here this is the section that you will see and you can upload the file the clean csv yeah this was the file i guess clean csv file and the complete regression these two files you can you need to upload and then you can start working on them could not get the files of yesterday uh, you haven't got the file okay i'll share the link with you again but i have shared the link for yesterday's file i mean let me see google this is the clean csv file that i was talking about i will share the link and you can download this file so what do you need to do you need to go to the file section then you need to go to the downloads you need to download this file as xlsx or you can download as csv as well then you need to upload this file into the binder So today we will be using another library which is scikit-learn. So this is the library that we have for applying all sort of machine learning models. Just give me a second. Hold on. Okay. So all sort of machine learning models are available in the scikit-learn library. So we will be just importing our model, the linear regression model from the scikit-learn library. So you can see we are importing the linear model and importing linear regression from that. So I'll just run this line. Now, after we have run this the up till here we have completed yesterday now today what we are going to do we are going to create a new object which is regression and we are going to store the linear regression that we have imported from the sklearn library which is up here we will be storing it in this object then we will be just doing the fit so what does fit means basically we are fitting the line on our points x and y so that means we are applying the algorithm with this single line we are applying the algorithm on our points so now the algorithm has been applied now if you want to check the slope intercept what is the slope intercept so when i click on the regression dot coefficient underscore I'll just hold on. I'll run it. And if I click on, if I type regression, dot coefficient underscore, it will give me the theta one value. 
and if I type regression dot intercept underscore, it will give me the intercept value. Now what we want to do now that we have the intercept and we have the we have the coefficient as well. So what does that mean? Okay, let's look into hold on. So what does that mean? We have these two values that we were talking about yesterday. This was the intercept, which is this value, which is close to 7 million, I guess. 1, 2, 3, 4, yeah, it's 7 million, close to 7 million. And we also have this value, which is the slope, which is 3.115. So that, that what does that mean now? Let, let's, let, let's try to look it in the equational form. A functional form you can say now what does this mean is basically to predict the revenue of a film with 50 million budget what will be the output for that what will be the you know the revenue that we will get out of it please mute yourself so what will be the revenue so let's put the values that we have in the equational form so this was the value for the this was the value for the intercept and this was the value for the slope. So when I put these values into the equation, this is what I have. Now let's plot them. Now let's say if I have a budget of $50 million, what will be the revenue for it? What will be the predicted revenue could be for that? So uh, according to our understanding that we had yesterday, it should be somewhere here. So let's try to figure this point. Let's try to understand what could be this value. So if I put all these value into the equational form, this is what I get. I get close to if I invest $50 million in a movie and I will get a revenue close to $148 million. So that, that's it now we have uh, we have got this value but we just want to make sure that how correct i mean uh, how accurate this is the predictions that we have how accurate these are but before that before we do that let's try to fit the line that uh, let's try to fit the prediction line on our previous points so when i do this when i When I write this code, which is uh, the figure size, which is the scatter plot and the alpha value. Now what I'm doing here, if I remove this point, if I remove this line, if I comment it out, then you will have the same graph that you had yesterday. But now that you want to fit your line, the linear regression line on this model or on this data point on the these different data points that you have and want to check how accurate your model is predicting the values so let's try to do that so if i uncomment them and run it so these are my predictions basically these are the this these are the values that the model is predicting so what does this mean this means that if i have a close to this value if i have a 50 million dollar budget production budget i will be getting output somewhere here close to this point if i have a budget close to this point we will be getting the output somewhere here if i have a budget this point we'll be getting the output and obviously there are a lot of errors that we can clearly see it is not able to predict this value because it was an outlier now what does the outlier means most of the uh, most of the values that we have in our data points are in this uh, from 0 to close to uh, close to 2.5 but this value is out of our range so our model could not predict this value so we call the mo the values which our model are not able to predict or which are not coming into the bound range that is called to be an outlier so this is an outlier for a model and uh, just like these are also the outlier that we are not able to predict these model now you can you can say that yes yeah, we could uh, we could change the model we could uh, do some manipulation with the line we could have a you know a more complex line which will predict more values so there are different aspects to that if we try to do it 
we could have a line just like we could have a line somewhere like this okay, hold on let me have a drawing pen it's not working okay let's say if we have a point if we have a line or if we have a curve or if we have a function in this form in this functional form maybe a parabolic function or maybe you know polynomial function so that could be also the case you know but let's not talk about that right now but these are the possibility that we can take into account now if we want to check if we want to check how well a model predicted the values what we can do we can do this regression dot score and this will give you the r score value what does this mean the r score means how well your model is predicting the values so we are getting the r score close to 54 percent that means our model is predicting close to 50 percent values to be accurate rest of the value it's not able to predict now that's very that's very good that's very good accuracy you know if i talk about because we only have one feature and based upon that one feature we are predicting the output so obviously for that the accuracy is is good according to me so this is the r score that we have predicted so uh, i talked about this earlier as well that when we'll do the modeling we also want to evaluate how well a model is performing so goodness of fit or r square is the is the matrix that we are using or is the parameter that we are using to find the accuracy of a model how well a model is doing so these these were the workflow of a data science process how does a data science project you know project work how do you approach a, any problem with a data scientific notation how do you solve a particular problem so we have seen all of that and today we will be moving further and trying to understand the code bit more that we did yesterday because uh, uh, today uh, yesterday i just tried to give you the intuition but today we will try to explain you know more in the pythonic form we'll try to understand more pythonic form that why this thing is happening and how this thing is happening and all the all the other stuff can you show me the cell that contain the code for the plotted graph yeah sure give me a second this was the code for it so we have just used the predictions predicted values now we have done regression dot predict x now usually what happens is that when we have a data set we divide that data into two parts training data and testing data so what we do is we do a training on the training data and then we try to predict the values based on the test on the testing uh, i mean the testing set data set that we have so we have different values in both the data set so it gives us more understanding that how well our model is predicting but in this case uh, we haven't done that we are just predicting the same values of x that our model have already seen so if anybody have any questions you can ask or we can proceed with the installation of anaconda then we can start today's session if anybody have any question please ask okay so everyone have downloaded anaconda which one gives us theta theta zero this is the coefficient theta one is this and theta zero is this theta zero you're talking about right Theta zero is this value. Hello. Yes. 
Sir, I am yes. asking the line that gives me the value of theta zero and the line that gives me the value of theta one in the code. The, these are the two lines, ma'am. The regression dot coefficient. This will give you the coefficient, and this will give you the intercept. So this okay. is theta one. The coefficient is the theta theta one, and intercept is theta zero. Okay, sir. Thank you. No problem. So you need to download this version, three point seven. No, no, it does have thirty-two bit also. You can check. Sixty-four bit and thirty-two bit is available. You need to check your system configuration first of all, whether your system supports thirty-two bit or whether it supports sixty-four bits. How can you do that? I guess everybody is clear with that. But let me try to give it again. Open your control panel. and uh, change the category to large icons and then what you can do you can go to system when you go to system it will tell you that whether your system is 32 bit or whether it is 64 bit so as i have 32 bit operating system so you might have maybe 64 or 32 so please download this anaconda on your system and if in anybody face any difficulties please let me know so yeah basically why we are downloading anaconda the reason is that because it has all the libraries if you will download only python then you need to download different libraries the library that we talked about like sklearn matplotlib cborn pandas numpy you have to do them you have to download them manually so anaconda it's like it has the, all the packages inbuilt packages basically it has close to you know 1000 packages for data science so that is why we prefer anaconda so that you don't have to download the packages you know uh, every time you try to work on a project i think somebody have already shared the link for anaconda when you go to the website it will show you download and it will take some time for the installation it will take some time maybe in half an hour or maybe more than that so i'll try to proceed further now once you download the anaconda this is the window that you need to open you need to search for anaconda download it now you need to install it uh, dr ashok you need to install it you need to do the installation as i have already installed it so i can't yes everybody please do the installation of anaconda on your system so when we will install the anaconda we can just type out anaconda navigator and then we can open the anaconda navigator and then what we need to do we need to click on launch jupiter notebook we just need to click up here and you can also see it has other ids as well that is you have r studio you can install r studio if somebody is trying to learn r you can also use vs code for python production code and all that and also spider but initially what we prefer we prefer to use jupiter because it's you know is easy and it's less complex so this is the window that you will be getting once you download it once you open the jupiter notebook now what you have to do you have to click up here and then you have to create a new folder so the new folder would be somewhere here now what you can do 
you can rename this folder as ml projects or whatever the name you want to give it uh, as i have already done it so i'll delete it now when you go to the ml project folder you need to upload your all previous codes that you that we have performed all the previous files that we have done now today we will be talking about intro to python so how many of you are familiar with python please type yes if somebody is familiar and please type no if you are not familiar with python environment no okay no okay okay cool okay great so a little bit okay cool so we'll try to understand different data types in python today the data types and all different things in python that we can do so i guess everybody has uh, is proceeding with the installation and this sort of window you will get once you do the installation and jupyter we will be using it's a, a kind of notebook so why jupyter why anaconda because it's ha it has all the libraries that we need i have already explained yeah installation is taking time it will take time if you have himanshu if you already installed uh, anaconda what you can do you can open jupyter you can open anaconda navigator and then you can create a new folder and you can upload all your file in that folder so that it will be easy for you you know when you when you, once you come back and you want to look at your code and the thing that you have done so it will be easy for you so you can create a new folder cool okay so the reason why we are using it because it has lots of libraries and we don't have to download them so what sort of library it does have it does have a list of list of libraries so let's let's try to look at them how many libraries does it have so these are the libraries that it already installed that come up with you know jupyter when you download jupyter you can search for them let's say we want to search for pandas do we have pandas so yes we do have pandas in here let's say we want to search for do we have numpy on our system Hold on. NumPy. So we also have NumPy pre-installed. Otherwise, what happens is that we have to go back to the command prompt, we have to set the virtual environment, then we have to do pip install numpy or pip install pandas, pip install different different libraries. We have to install them manually. So Jupyter remove this headache, you know. For us, it takes it. Uh, it reduces our work when we when we download Anaconda Navigator it, because it has already pre-installed all these libraries that we need to work on a data science project. Okay, so let's move to the first thing that we will be trying to look at today. Is we will uh, first of all we'll try to understand what is variable and why do we even need variable. So let's say you have created, you are a very good programmer and you have created a game just like this. So how, if you want to store the life of a player, how would you store it? You need to store it somewhere, right? If you want to store, if you want to score, store the score of a player, how many scores he have scored, how many points he have gathered. So you need some sort of memory location that you can refer these different values to. So variable is going to help you in this case. So variable you can imagine a variable is just like a box where you can throw different values. You can store different values. So let's say I have a variable which is my age. So I store a value in this variable 32. Now I keep that 32. Now let's say if I after one year I have to update the value or maybe after some time in the game I have a some process some iteration with with which the value is going to be changed. So how that is going to happen. So what is going to happen. It is going to dump that value and it is going to assign a new value 33 to that variable to my age. So let's try to look at uh, look that in the form of coding. Oh, 
okay now i have this variable i have this variable as my age so i can assign any value let's say i assign the value to be 25 right now if i want to check the value that what is the value of my age so what i have to do i just have to call that location now where i have stored these values so i have stored my value in my age so i need to call my age so when i'll print my age i will get the value for my age right now if i let's say if i want to update my age i want to i'm getting older now and my age is now 26 so let's say if i update that what will happen let's see what is the value coming out to be of my age so it's coming out to be 28 now let's imagine that if i have if my if i my age is 33 and if i'm able to print it out it's 33. now it uh, python has a dynamic assignments or dynamic typing we call it that you can assign different values to a variable okay the same way that i have explained in the slide if you have initially you have some values and after some time you can assign these values so variable we all are familiar with if we have some maths background and which i guess all of us have so in variable always changes it is not a constant value it changes over time so just like the same you know it, in, in in python or in sir please share yesterday notebook i have not received it yeah i will share it uh, by the end of the session i've asked the team to share it with you if python is there a system anaconda installation giving error if python is there system anaconda is giving an error no it should not i uh, i also have python on my system but doesn't give me an error you can try to look uh, look for it maybe you can try to share the screenshot with me then maybe i can help okay so if i want to do some sort of operation on this maybe i want to divide my age into three parts so what do i have to do do i have to do again some assignments yes i can do the assignments but let's say i just want to see that if i divide my age with some numbers what what is the value i'm going to get so i can do that same operation in the print print function of python so it will give me a value if i run it so what i'll do first of all not to, um, i'll clear all the outputs yeah i'll clear all the outputs okay yeah okay now <clears throat> now if i divide it i get this value now let's say if i want to change my value of age after a year after a year i'm getting older so obviously i want to do some sort of i want to write a code and with the help of which uh, which the age, age is going to be updated after a year one is going to be added to that value so if i do that and if i do the assignment my age plus one is equal to my age if i print it what is the value uh you think i'm going to get can you tell me what is the value i will be getting can anybody type it out Twelve. okay anyone else 34 okay 34 okay 34 34 34 okay okay uh, dr vinita is saying we will be getting value 12 okay let's check whether we are going to get values 12 or whether we are going to get value 34 oh we get the value as 34 so why we haven't got the value as 12 because we haven't done any assignment in this case we were just checking the values when we divide my age the variable when we divide that variable by three we were just checking what is the value we could get but we haven't done any assignment if we have done it in this way that uh, my age is equals to 
coronavirus one. My age divided by three. If I do that, my age is not defined. Okay. Yeah. See, this is the error you get if you make any sort of typing error. Yes, yes, I know, believe so, I know. <laughs> I'm just giving an example. If we do any sort of typing error in Python, it will give us different sort of errors. So we just need to make sure every time when we are doing any assignment, capital A and lowercase and uppercase A, they are going to be different. So we need to keep this thing in our mind. So now let's check. Now, what will be the value after this? Can anybody tell me if I update the value of my age and if I do plus one, what will be the value I'll be getting? After this operation? Yeah, exactly. That's right. But why we are getting 12.0? Why we are not getting only, you know, uh, 12 or 11? No, Preeti, no, no, no. I think you're not focusing on the slides. You're not focusing. If anybody is using any sort of other work, please leave it and please focus on the on these notebooks that I'm trying to explain here. Yeah. Because my age, I have done assignment here. I have assigned the value of my age and divided that value with three. So it was, now if I print here again my age, if I print, so this is the value I'm going to get. Yes, 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 yes. Right, right. Absolutely. But uh, in, Python, what we call 33 and what we call 11. So yeah, we'll look at that later on maybe. Let's leave it for now. Let's, uh, I have a challenge for you all. Uh, you all need to do it. It's very simple. I guess everybody is able to do it. Because that's what I thought. So I have a challenge. Uh, let's look at this challenge. So you have to create a variable called restaurant bill and if it is the, the challenge is for someone if they have installed Anaconda. If they haven't, what they can do, they can again go to tryjupiter.org and they can do it from there. If you want, I can share the link with you for that. Yeah, Google Cloud would work. I mean, this is not the right link. Let me send it again. Yeah. Google Cloud will work, but in case when we want to upload a file, that's going to be some issue we might face because that's different for Jupyter, for Cloud. Okay, so what is the challenge? So you, what you have to do, you have to create a variable called restaurant bill, and you have to set its value to 36.17, and you have to create a variable called service charge and set its value to be 0.15. And then you have to print out the amount of tip that you will be giving. How to install Jupyter Notebook. I'm not able to use. Sir, you, what you can do, sir, uh, you can use uh, tryjupyter.org. If you're not able to install it. There might be some system discrepancy or independent variable that we have to do. But what you can do, sir, you can use try jupyter.org or what you can do you can use google collab as well so i'll try to show you google collab as well if somebody is not familiar with google collab you can also use google collab what you need to do you need to type on google as google collab or i'll also share the link with you all so Okay, yeah, I'll repeat the question. I'll repeat the question. So what you can do, you can just click on new notebook and it will open new notebook in front of you. It's just like uh, Jupyter with the uh, few changes.
yes yeah i'll repeat the question first of all you need to connect and then you can do any operation that you want let's say i want to assign my age to be 24 and i want to print my age what is the value of age so it will get connected and then it will work okay so it's it's just like the same and to run the code i guess everybody remember you have to press the shift plus enter key shift plus enter or you can just click on this play button okay uh, the question was you have to create a variable called restaurant bill this is the name of a variable i'll drop down this question in the comment section so that everybody can read it yeah so you have to create a variable called restaurant bill and you have to set its value to 36.17 and you have to create a variable called service charge and set its value to be 0 0.15 0 0.125 so you have to print the amount of tip please type out your answers Mm hmm not 10 percent is 12.5 percent viduti please everybody do it because i want an interactive session If somebody is facing any difficulty, please let me know. Okay, yeah, I'll answer that whether it's the right one or not. I need to see everyone's answer. Please type everyone. Only then I'll continue. If you don't know the answer, that's okay. Unable to open Jupyter. Ma'am, I told you, you can use Google Collab. You can use tryjupyter.org. You can type, you can search for Google Collab on Google. You can try Jupyter Org. Type on Google. Jupyter Notebook. Type on Google. Jupyter Notebook. It will take you to this website, ma'am. Yeah, what is the answer, Ashish? Can you give me the answer? I I think you didn't get the question, Ashish. The question was you need to print out the amount of tip. Okay, ma'am, you can use Jupyter Notebook. Type on Google Jupyter Notebook. It will take you to this website. Then you will click on try it in your browser. Then you can click on try classic notebook. I need to see everyone's response first of all. Please everyone, if you are facing any difficulties, please let me know. That's the only way I can help you. You can use this ma'am. If somebody is facing any difficulty, you can use Collab, you can use Jupyter Online. There are different tools that you can use. Tools are never a problem. Okay, so I guess nobody is really interested to answer this question. Okay, let me show you what could be the answer, how we are going to solve this question. First of all, we'll be assigning the restaurant bill to a variable. Okay, then what we'll be doing, we'll be assigning the service charge to another variable. Then we'll be just printing out the value that what will what will be the tip so the tip is 4.5 and uh, viduti you are absolutely right collapse for you now let's see uh we would i was talking about this thing that why uh why there is a difference is so uh, can somebody tell me that is there any difference between 33 and uh, 30 11.9 uh, if i talk about types 
in python do they have a different type a variable type if i assign a variable with the 33 okay and if i assign b variable with the 33.0 so do they gonna have a same type or do they gonna have a different types variable type because i guess this is a variable assignment 4.5 4.5 okay i haven't seen your uh, chat so sorry for that int okay okay int float different yeah obviously they are different float different different type <laughs> a is integer and okay a is integer yeah a is integer what about b b is float okay anybody else would like to add something b is double what does that mean double uh, what does that mean sushil b is double b is natural number okay b is double or float okay float okay floating number okay yeah nice okay both are numeric <laughs> obviously they are numeric but there must be some difference <laughs> they are numeric that's very that's for sure i mean okay let's let's try to look at them okay let's try to look at them up here only where i have typed them yeah up here let's add this one okay let's try to so how can we check both are numeric yeah they are numeric for sure but uh, in numeric we have two types in python if i talk about the variable in python we have two types so let's check the type which which type they are they belongs to let's check the type for a what is the type so it's giving me int so int what does int means everybody is uh, aware int means integer i guess correct 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 what the, let's let's check the type for b float so all of you i mean most of you were right the type of b was float now let's say if i give a name to somebody okay let's say i give a name so how does we do the name assignment in python we do it in this way we use single quotes or we use double quotes okay I'm not getting response on Jupyter. You need to press shift plus. What is the window that you are getting? Are you getting some error? Some black window? Is it showing you busy or something? Then you can try collab, ma'am. Try Google collab. Search on Google, Google collab. You can try Google collab. Google collab. You can try that out. It will work up and fine. This is the link that you can go to. what key i have to press to get result shift plus enter or what you can do on the top of it you will see there is a run option you can run it you can run the code by clicking on the run what keys i, I told you ma'am okay cool now what i was saying is that if i want to assign a name to a variable how would i do that I can do it with the help of single quotes. Let's say I'm assigning a name, which is my name, obviously. So my name, I'm assigning my name it to be Nandesh. Okay. Now let's say if I'm assigning my name again with the my name underscore one, and I'm assigning with the help of double quotes. And I'm saying this to be Nandesh. So if i if i'm going to check the type first of all uh is it going to be same for both of them name and name underscore one is it going to be same or is it going to be different yes it's going to be a string but is it going to be same or different same exactly it's going to be same because i told you that in python you can do the string assignment in two form two ways by using single quotes and by using double quotes 
so it is also let's check the type for so type is a function that we use in python to check the type of any variable that we have so it's also string okay cool now now let's move let, now we have covered so far we have covered integer we have covered float we have covered string what are strings so everybody is clear with this if anybody have any questions you can ask otherwise i'm moving forward now let's say these are the data type basically a text we have a number some sort of number we have which is an integer we have a number which has a value to be three point you know uh, 3.14 which is a float these are the data types that we have in python now let's look at collection so what does collection means basically collection means something in python where we want to store different data types into single variable now let's let's look at this case let's look at this case let's say if i want to store first three, you know prime numbers first prime number second prime number third prime number so i have to do a variable assignment as first of all first prime number second prime number third prime number but if i want to store them together how would i do that I would do it with the help of a list. So list is the type of collection that we have in Python. No, not array. Yeah, you can also do that with array. I'll talk about the array uh, in late, later on, maybe. Yeah, it's a, it's an array. In Python, we call it array. So what is the array? Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> it, it's list. It's called list in Python, basically. So if I go and check the type not getting the result even after clicking on run mm. uh, did you try google collab try uh, google collab you will definitely get answers so please try google collab connectivity issue yeah it could be it could be a yeah, network problem could be the network problem i guess so why we have a list type in python the reason why we have a list type in python so that we can store different variable at a single location we can save some sort of memory or we can save some sort of location also you know we don't you don't have to type it again and again now let's say we want to store the name of student let's say i want to store the name of student student one I'm storing in this way student one as let's say it to be that I can see the name here let's say it to be Vinita now let's say I want to store the second student second student could be let's say it's Suresh I'm just typing in the name randomly that i'm seeing on my window let's say i want to store not students i mean student yeah yeah, yeah I'm, I'm correcting it but that doesn't matter anyway okay okay what is this guy name okay let me check now is it going to be is it this is going to be convenient or if i do it this way now okay this is the this is one way of storing student information now let's say i want to store the roll number as well now what i have to do i have to say maybe roll number one for vinita i assign maybe a roll number 15 uh, let's say i am assigning a roll number for the second student maybe i am assigning it to be two and you know it could be like something maybe 16 let's keep it in order let's say i'm assigning the number three 
it could be 17 so is there a way that we can do it in a you know more easy is there an easy way to do it yes definitely there is a easy way to do it what we can do we can create a list student underscore role okay let's say i have created this list so list is going to be created by using these parentheses square brackets so if i want first of all what i will do i will store the name of a person then i will store their role number okay So we need to make sure we are putting commas. So which is the easy way? You know, what do you think? Which is the easy way? This the first one or the second one, which will save your time and which will save your memory. Exactly. So that's why we have list here. So in list, what we can do, we can store different data types. We can store number, we can store integer, we can store float, we can store string. String. The three data type that we have started till now, that is uh, integer, float, and string. Can you create a list of student as well? Yeah, of course, we can We can also do that. That's not a problem. I mean, if I can do it. So let's let's check the first of all, let's check the type. So that you know, you might be saying that uh, how can we trust uh, whether he's saying right or not? Let's let's check the type. Let's Python decide that what is the type. Okay, yeah, I was right actually. So <laughs> yes, the type is list basically. Now somebody saying can we store only student in a list? So we can create a list with the name of students. Or what we can do, I can store simple names that are Ram or maybe Sam, maybe Raman. That's what coming in my head. So if I go and also check the type of the students, what is going to be the type? Students, they will have a type as list. Same data type will be there in list. Yes, yes, you could have uh, numbers all numbers in a list you could have uh, you know integer all integer in a list you could have all floats in a list you could have all strings in a list. So that's never a problem with string. So as you can see uh, I here I have done the same thing I have created a list which is cool people I have uh, stored some of the people name and then I have created a prime and people I have used prime numbers and I have added people in the list. So it is going to give me list only. Now let's say I have created this list, right? Now let's say I want to access the second element or uh, let, let, let's go to this one first. No, let's go to this one first. This one is easy. So let's say I, if I want to access the second element, which is Sham, how would I do that? Can somebody tell me how can I access Sham from this list? If I only want to print out Sham, can I do that? Is it even possible or is it not? Can somebody tell me please? Yes, so how can we do that? Del? No, it's not possible, okay. Okay, any other response? Using comma and can you type the code? Can you type the code in the chat window so, so that I can see it and I can try it out in front of you? Okay, print student. Okay, let me try this code, Dr. Vinita. Let me try it. Let's see if it works. Okay, let's see. I'm not sure I haven't tried this. Oh, we are getting error. Somebody else wants to try. Okay. Give me the code that I can use. 
uh, what is where name index number okay so where name could be like students so what should i type in the index uh, prabjot can you tell me what should i type in the index number if i want to access sham should i should i type two okay I, i'll type one okay let's see i'll type one but why is it isn't it on the second location sham why this thing is happening you know can somebody tell me why we are having this problem right 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 okay indexing okay everybody is already you know genius in this group <laughs> okay so in in list basically or in python or in most of the cases what happens basically is that the indexing it starts from zero so it's zeroth element it's first element it's second element so if i try so can somebody tell me if i try to print three what will happen if i try to print three if i try to print three what will happen object not found okay somebody else want to give it a try what will happen if i try to print the element which is on the third index error outbound index out of range cool cool so you all are genius you know you already know a lot of stuff so this indexing so can i do one thing now uh can i assign shams value or raman's value to a different variable can i do that is it even possible let's say uh, i have a list of students all the student of a class and i want to pick that student who came first in the class and i want to store the his his values in a different list which is a toppers list so let's say i have a class student list and i have few students in this list maybe rama or maybe lakshman these are the name coming on my head because due to ramayana everybody is watching i guess so rama lakshman can somebody suggest me some name okay let's write this preeti okay preeti we can write we can write yeah pankaj we can write thank you pankaj let's say uh, what should we write let's say we write suresh okay so this is the these are the students of my class okay now what i want to do i want to create a list which is of topper so i i uh, usually what happens we have two or three toppers in the class but as we have a small list let's say we want to store only two toppers the rank 1 and the the in the rank 2 so how do we do that is it even possible that can we do it is there a way that we can do it okay how can we do it please help me out please type out the code please type out the code okay let's first of all see uh and let's understand let's see who came first so according to me pankaj came first okay so i want to store the value of pankaj in a list in a, in this list in new list so we can initialize that. no i we are not we have not reached to array yet we are only talking about list only store topper list append okay that's the function okay but we, i want to use my list only can you write code jaydi can you write code okay student top okay the code was something like this uh, let me see let's let's copy this code let's write this out if it works oh we are getting error somebody gave me this code uh, dr vinita i guess i'm getting error why i'm getting error 
I want to store the value of Pankaj. One, two, three, four, five. What is the error? Class student is not defined. Oh, I'm sorry. That's my bad. I'm so sorry. Okay. Now let's print the value of topper. Oh, but no, it has stored Suresh. I want Pankaj. Pankaj is the topper, not Suresh. Okay. What we can do? Max. No, let's not talk about the functions for now. Let's talk about the things that we have discussed for now. Instead of three, okay. Instead of four, we can type three, okay. Oh yes, we did it. So congratulations to you, Venita, you did it well. So this is the way, this is the one way that we can do it. We can store the values from a list by using indexing into a different, different variable. So if this variable, let's check the type of topper now. Because I guess I've asked you to store the value. Let's check the type first of all, okay? But topper is a string. I said I want to store the value of topper in the form of another list. So how do we do it? I mean, is it even possible? I want to store the value of topper of Pankaj in a different list. I want that type to be list. Is it possible? Can we do that? Can somebody please help me out? Okay, I said uh, when we store uh, the code that you gave uh, Dr. Venita to me, uh, it is storing the value of top, uh, topper. That's right, but uh, we, are, we want that value to be in the form of list. Okay, uh, in closing topper in. Uh, like this you are talking about? This is the way? This is how I do it? Okay, yeah, so that's that's the way that we can do it. I mean and also yeah, it's it's done So I guess everybody got what I did right let me send the code somebody missed on something So everybody understood this thing right Mm -hmm. Yeah, that that's what I did. That's what I did prop Jodh, you can see Right that is what I did Okay now that we have uh, looked into list now let's uh, how can we use a list in this way also we can store different uh, your screen is playing very slowly at my side sir uh, internet problem, Prabhjot. You got an internet issue on your side. You have to fix that. Okay. So what we can do, we can store different values of eggs. I have different color. I have eggs of different colors. You know, of different textures. So I I can store the values of eggs in different different in a list. So this way I do it. I have a list of eggs and so where is my egg? Let's say my egg is this. So how do I get this egg? If this is my egg, I want to access to this egg. How can I do that? Can somebody tell me? It's a refresher again. And it's very obvious. This one. This is my egg and uh, two, zero, one, two. So this is how the indexing starts from zero, then one, then two, then three, then four. So, sir, please share the slide. I missed few parts due to network issue. In slide, nothing is covered. I mean, uh, I'm just explaining things on the slide. Most of the things are on the note, uh, notebook. So I will share the notebook with you. Okay. Yeah, so I think everybody is following, I guess. So now what is the difference now somebody was talking about list and uh, somebody said about array few things about array 
so basically a list is like a ballerina it is very flexible it's very adaptable it can you know it has a, a flexible body it can do stretching very well so what does that mean that means it can store different data types it can store integer it can store float it can store also it can store string also but when we talk about array so arrays are like a bodybuilder and bodybuilders they are quite tough you know they don't like new things they don't like to try out new things they like to follow their old schedule so that's what the array is you can only store one type of data in an array maybe you can store a numbers maybe you can store strings okay now let's see do i have okay now let's move to the next type which is so before before we go further to any other type now uh, have we seen array before let's try to look let's have we seen array before when we were dealing with the, or have we the thing that we have understood here can we go back and check have we seen any string any numbers in the previous work that we did so what is the type of this this thing can somebody tell me what is the type what would be the type if i check the type of this thing only what is the type it is a string as you can see the with the color when we write a string it gives the color to it so it's a string okay now this is also a variable data is also a type of variable what type of variable is it we'll talk about this we'll look into that now let's see if we have seen array before yes we have seen array so this is the array that we have now let's see i only want to access i don't want the array option to be there right i just want only the let's see what i can do about that let's see okay so regression dot coefficient okay and i if i type zero okay name regression coefficient is not defined let me run it uh, again i have to run all these it's running sweet it's taking a little longer please wait everybody let me run it one by one mm, it's not running okay yeah it's running now now what i was saying is that if i want to get the value this is the array the coefficient the regression coefficient is stored in the form of in the data type which is array right so if i want to get the value of coefficient only so how do i do that this is the way that i can do it if i type 1 i will obviously get an error if i type 0 then i might get it this way okay there is some
So basically, why do we have array and why do we have list in, in Python? Because they are almost the same. The reason why we have array in Python is because we use array for scientific calculation for doing any sort of calculation for uh, doing that we need array so that is why we have array data type because uh, they can only store numbers at a time and they are not that flexible you cannot mess around with them so that is why we have array okay now now i have a now let's say i have a question for you all if i guess if let's see if somebody is able to answer this keeping in this thing in a in your mind about array so why did a programmer quit his job why did the programmer quit his job? If I talk about scientific calculation, so that's that is the reason we use them array. Not not list. So can somebody tell me what is why a programmer quit his job? I think everybody's sleeping. Hello. Okay. <laughs> okay, so I'll tell you I'll tell you why he's quit. I quit his I'll I'll tell you why he quit his job. Because he didn't get a raise. That was the reason. He didn't get a raise. <laughs> Okay, so with this note, uh, we'll take a break and then we when we'll come back, then we'll talk about a different data type. Thank you. I just try to make you guys live.